I like to go running and I like to document my running journey along the way and what I use is an action camera so currently I'm using the DJI Osmo Action 3 and I use it instead of using my iPhone because the iPhone just feels a little bit fragile sometimes the guys at XTU have sent me the S6 camera which is the budget version of those more expensive action cameras so let's give it a try out just to see what the budget alternatives to the expensive cameras are like All right, let's start with a quick unboxing and believe me, you get a lot of accessories with this. So let's get to the unboxing of the XTU S6 action camera. So we'll get to the S6 action camera in a moment. As you can see, it comes in this waterproof case. We'll have a look at this camera in closer depth shortly. So this is the waterproof case and with this attached to the action camera you can get down to depths of 131 feet. So good if you're a keen diver. So the instruction manual and two boxes of goodies. So let's start with this one first. So you get a USB-A to USB-C cable. Nice cleaning cloth and various mounts. So you've got a handlebar mount there. You get a few, you get four cable ties. You get an anti-loss rope, you get an assortment of straps, so you get four of these straps, and two of these Velcro straps, and into the second box of goodies, so you get a USB-C to USB-A adapter, get another mount for the camera, just in case you, you want to protect it. Obviously to mount this to something you're going to need something like this, so if you're not going to use the waterproof mount then you might want to have something like this instead. So we'll have a look at that later. Then we have an assortment of different mounts. So if you want to connect it to this, you can do. If you want to connect it to this, then you can do all with these mounts that connect to the camera as well. We get another strap, another Velcro strap. We get two holders with an adhesive strip on the back in case you want to stick it to something like a helmet or something like that. More adhesive pads. And you've got a couple more mounts. And it comes with a remote control. So if you want to do any you want to leave the camera at a distance and then remotely press the trigger then you can with that. See I told you it comes with quite a few accessories right out of the box you know that shot proof case the various mounts and even a remote control. So this is the XTU action camera and it has a dual screen so we've got one there and if you turn it over to the other side we have a, another one there. One of the limitations by this is that you can only have one screen on at a time. So if you're doing some vlogging, for example, or you're running or you're doing your activity and you want to change the camera, you just have to press this button here and it will flip the screen around to that side. So when it does do that, then you haven't got access to this. And also another issue is that this isn't a touch screen, which is a bit frustrating. So if you do ever need to make some adjustments, you just need to change the screen again, flick it back on this side and then you can make those adjustments on this side and then when you've made the adjustment flick the screen round and then you're back onto it again. This feature is available on XTU's Max 2 action camera. It's definitely a feature that you can quickly become frustrated by, particularly if, like me, you're used to using something of a more premium offering where both screens can be on and are both touch screens as well. Another one of my frustrations with this is that it doesn't do automatic orientation. So you might want to go from landscape to portrait, but it doesn't correct automatically. So you, what you have to do is just change, manually change the orientation. So as you can see now it's changed, so I'd have it like that way. But it is so frustrating that you have to do it this manual way as opposed to it automatically doing it. Because I might switch from filming something that way and then wanting to film it that way. And then, you know, having to, it's a very, it's a lot of manual processes within this camera. Let's talk about battery life. Crucial for anyone wanting to use this for long periods. This camera has a 1350 milliamp hour battery, which gives you about 90 minutes of continuous recording in 4K and up to 150 minutes recording in 1080 30 frames per second. Pretty standard for action cameras in this category and it's always a good idea to carry a spare battery just in case, which is also available to buy from XTU. 
you also get a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. So with some action cameras, you do have to purchase them separately, but with this one, XDU, throw it in with it as well. It features a H22 CPU chip and a Sony IMX386 CMOS sensor. And then on this side, you have under this, this uh, release here, you have a USB-C port and a micro HDMI port, as well as a speaker. So on top of the camera, you have the on off button, which doubles up as a menu button. In the middle of that, you've got the microphone. And on the right hand side, you have the start stop recording button, which doubles up as the switch screens button. And then on this side, you have your up down buttons, which obviously control various things within the menu. On the bottom side, this is where I showed you that the battery. That's where the battery compartment is and also the micro SD port is there as well. And you've also got a quarter thread interface here. So if you want to add a tripod, so like this, directly to the camera without having to mount it, put it in a case or anything like that, then you can do. And then you've got that already and mountable like that. First impressions, the camera feels solid, compact, and it's definitely geared towards those who want a budget, versatile action camera that doesn't break the bank, and it's definitely shown in its sort of plastic feel. But don't judge it on that, because it's definitely a good thing when it comes to the weight of this. The design of this is sleek and rugged, perfect for outdoor activities like running, hiking, or even swimming, thanks to its waterproof capabilities of up to 131 feet when in this case. But just remember, unlike a premium action camera like this, which is waterproof without the case, this one is not waterproof without this case on as well. So let's talk specs. This camera packs a punch with its 4K 30fps video recording, which is fantastic for capturing smooth, high quality footage. It also has a 20 megapixel photo resolution, so it's not too shabby for a camera in this price range. And for all my fellow runners out there, this camera's image stabilization is good for a camera in this price range. It's not quite as good as the level of something like this, which you'll see in a moment, but it's surprisingly good at keeping the footage steady, even during intense runs. Plus it has a 170 degree wide angle lens, so you get that immersive in the moment feel to your videos. So here's a side by side comparison of both of these cameras. You can see that the XTU S6 holds its own pretty well, especially considering the price difference. The colors are vibrant and the details are sharp, although the Osmo Action 3 does edge it out in terms of dynamic range and stabilization. But remember the price of both of these, budget, premium. One thing I do like about this camera is how user friendly it is. The two inch touchscreen on the back is easy to navigate, generally responsive, but can at times be a little bit clunky, especially when you're out on the move, which can be incredibly frustrating. And this does support voice control, which is perfect for a hands-free operation during a run. Video start. Video stop. So the modes that you do get on this camera, you get normal mode, lapse, slow motion, underwater, car looping, video and photo. And if we scroll down, we get night scene as well. And in photo mode, you get normal photo, lapse photo, timing photo, burst, long exposure and raw photo. One of the things that I do really like about this is the settings menu. There is a lot of choice for different settings and there's a lot of customization that it allows you to do. Obviously there's no perfect settings because depending on your conditions and your complexion, it will determine what settings you need for your scene. So let's just go through the settings that are available on this. So in resolution, you've got standard resolution 4K 30, then you've got 4K super view, and then these other views that are video encode. So I'm currently, so I like to film in H.265, but you can also film in H.264. And then LDC, I like to have that on, that is the lens distortion correction. You'll find that when it's off, you sort of get a very sort of a glass eye feature. And then when it's on, it fixes that automatically. So I do prefer having this setting on. Then you've got gyro electronic image stabilization, which currently sets to normal, but you also have off, normal, super, and gyro data. Now gyro data lets you use an app, I just think it's called gyro data, that allows you to control the amount of stabilization that 
is corrected within the app itself. Then some of the things that I would really like to be on the Osmo Action, like meter mode, center, average, and spot, it's definitely features I'd love to have on that action camera. Then you can change your exposure, your ISO, all the way up to 1600. Then your white balance, you can't set it to a figure, just these predetermined settings here. So daylight, cloudy, tungsten, and then you've got that one there. And then you've got scene mode, so auto, personage, scenery, and defog. And then sharpness, high, medium, and low. And you can change the contrast, brightness, and saturation of your picture. And then image quality, high or standard. Filter, whether you only want to change any of these things. Black and white, colorful, brown, warm, cold. And then pre-recording. And those are the settings for your normal video. Now with the XTU Go app, you can control the camera. So, but you do have to, the only way to connect to the camera is via Wi-Fi. So let me just connect the Wi-Fi there. Now I'm connected, so I can either view the files or enter the camera. Every setting that you do get on the camera itself, you can use via the app here. And then you can also view the files that you've taken from this camera and then you can download them. I have found that getting the footage from the camera onto your phone can take a bit of time. So just be a bit wary if you are, if you do have big files, because it will take some time, but you can always, I've got an iPhone 15 Pro here. You can always stick, take the memory card out of this and then put it, connect it to the phone. And it's a lot quicker to get it off the camera onto your phone. Now let's go and see the XTU S6 camera in action. This is, this is the super view on the XTU S6. This is a 4K30 with the normal electronic image stabilization enabled. So this is 4K30 with a super stabilization enabled. 4K 30 frames per second, super view. 1080p 60 frames per second. 1080p 60 frames per second, super view. 1080p 60 frames per second. stabilization on both cameras. Both cameras held at arm's length. This is what the video quality with the XCU S6 looks like with no electronic stabilization enabled. Okay, 30 frames per second. stabilization on both cameras with both cameras held at arm's length recording on both the S6 and the DJI Osmo Action 3 so this is the audio on the S6 and this is the audio 
on the Action 3. This is the wide angle and the DJI Osmo on Action 3. And this is the wide angle on the XTU S6. So in comparison with this, it's not as wide as the Osmo Action 3. See how the low light comparison with normal stabilization on with both cameras and then how it transitions as we get into lighter conditions. Let's just see how it adjusts to the lighter conditions. So we're now in the lighter conditions. So that's the XTU S6 camera. My main problem with this is this. When you've got one of these, something like the DJI Osmo Action 3, and you compare it to this, then those differences between this and this really do stand out. This is actually a good camera, and I was struggling to do this video because I've used this first, but in hindsight, this is a good camera for the price. This essentially, brand new, was three times the cost of this, but as this at the budget end of the spectrum at around about $100 or £100, this is actually a good quality camera. And it was probably a little bit too harsh of me to judge the, the XTU by the standards that I've been used to with the Action 3. So taking this on, the, on its merit, this is actually a really good camera for its price. So who is this XTU S6 for? If you're someone who loves outdoor activities, whether it's running, cycling, swimming, or even vlogging your adventures, this camera is a solid option. It's especially great if you're on a budget, but still want to capture good quality footage. It's perfect for runners like me who want a reliable camera without spending a fortune. Sure, it might not replace a premium camera like the DJI Osmo Action 3, but for the price, it's an impressive piece of gear. So after putting the XTU S6 through its paces, it's clear that while it does a lot of things well, it's definitely noticeable the differences in picture quality when you've used a premium action camera like this one, or even a newer smartphone like an iPhone or something like that. The dynamic range isn't quite as sharp and in challenging lighting conditions, which affects a lot of action cameras, you might see some loss in detail or color accuracy. But that said, if you can overlook that and you're shooting in good lighting conditions, Conditions, then this camera performs just fine in most casual uses. For the price point, it's still a solid choice if you're looking to document your runs or outdoor activities without spending a lot of money. So, would I recommend it? Yes, as long as you keep your expectations in check when it comes to video quality. And XT on their marketing for this sum it up perfectly. This is your ideal first action camera, providing you don't go straight to the premium one like I did. For the right person, especially if you're on a budget, then the XTU S6 can get the job done. And with all the accessories that you get with this as part of the bundle, which you've got to remember, if you get a premium action camera, you would have to pay additionally for. If top tier footage is a priority, you might want to stick with something like the DJI Osmo Action or your phone. But then you'll be paying a premium for those options. Many thanks to XTU for providing this action camera for me to test and review. It's greatly appreciated. If you like it, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. And I'll see you in the next one.